Hello and welcome back. So it's about time to check out the rest of the gullet. Kind of the poor district around here. B has home. Sure. Uh, we don't know too much other than that <clears throat> there are some thieves in the cavern that I didn't kill yet. Maybe I'm gonna kill them later. We'll see. This is it? You must gather your party. Hmm. Actually, it would be nice if we heard the announcer, uh, or, forth. uh, or commentator more. The hole. Okay, let's go down a noise home. Apparently, this is the guy who tries to keep everyone uh, healthy, fed, whatever. Not sure how he does it, but I guess uh, that's why we're here. All right, annoy. Hi. An elder Roperu man squints in your direction before blinking profusely. He hobbles closer, bare feet slapping the splintered floorboards of his abode. Mm -hmm. What say you, girl? Don't call me a girl. He peers steadily into your face, blinking faster all the while. The man's arms are thin as sticks, and what teeth he has are yellowed or black from years of malnourishment. Can you see me? How do you know who I am? I see much and many things. I simply do not look with these eyes in the same manner that others do. <clears throat> I have heard much as well. People speak of your kindness, watcher who chases Aethas. What? People speak of my kindness? I also hear the Raparu's heartbeat, grown thready and pained. Now a watcher comes to the gullet, as Amira has shown me you would. At least piety can thrive in this dark and unforgiving burrow. That sea-swept voice. One of Andra's own comes to visit me at last. Actually, a starving beggar sent me to speak with you. His lids half close, heavy with thought. The Raparu are being crushed from the top. We starve so slowly. It is an agony. Starving? Are the gods so occupied that they cannot see inside the mountain? No one deserves to suffer. Not like this. Seraphim's eyes close as he nods along. The old man shrugs. This is the Juana way. The fish of our nets are drawn for the tribe. The fruit of our fields, too, is reaped for the tribe. And the coin of our pockets belongs. Not to one, but to all. Sounds like uh, uh, some people didn't get the memo. All spoils are gifted to the whole of the tribe. The tribe then partakes from the top down. From the most deserving to the least. Um, why the Roparu, the least deserving? The last to partake of the tribe's spoils. The Mataru risk their lives to protect the tribe. The Kuaru provided skilled goods and services. Okay. The tribe takes care of the Raparu more than we contribute to the tribe. Or it did. Before our numbers swelled too large, the Dawn Stars would feed us. But the guards forbid them to pervert the order of sharing. There was a man who helped us. A soft-hearted pirate named Ulug. He worked with the Principi captain. Mad Morena, they call her. To bring us food from the black market. But for days now, we've had nothing. Didn't I kill Mad Morena? Ulug was never late with his shipments, 
always very conscientious. A good boy. For him to disappear for several days without word. He must be dead. Hmm. The Queen refuses to increase our share of the prize share. Without Ulug's shipments, we will surely starve. I am asking you, what else can we do? I don't want to be that guy, but... Can you guys just go and try to fish or something? I can reestablish the smuggling operation through the black market. Tell me how to get to Delver's Row. That doesn't seem like a long-term solution. You need an advocate. I will speak with the royals at Serpent's Crown on your behalf. <clears throat> I mean, like, I get the kind of system, uh, in theory, but it clearly doesn't work that way, and uh, their honor is not gonna be enough to uh, honor the system, so... They're not gonna honor your system, they're not gonna give you food. Tell me how to get to Delver's Row, and I consider helping you. Yeah. If you do not know your way to the row, someone at the hole may be able to help you. I don't like either of these options. You need an advocate. I will speak with the royals at Serpent's Crown on your behalf. Onakaza will listen. Her concern holds this island together. He cans his gaze to the side, eyes wandering. Perhaps you can achieve what those of my caste cannot. Gain us favor with the crown. And always, we, Roparu, will be indebted to you. How else we can we resolve the food shortage? If we cannot convince the Mataru nor the Principi, I believe the Dawn Stars may help us. But why? People are gonna act uh, based on their own self-interest for the most most part. Peatley is a child of the Dawn Stars and has become the Gullet's most cherished healer. I believe she would willingly hear your request for charity. Speak, and I will listen. Okay. You talk so slowly, man. I wanna leave. Hmm. So, Talos is home. Hmm. That's a that's a good question he the the old guy presented. I can imagine a society where uh, everyone is taken care of, uh, regardless of how much he's uh, contributing. <clears throat> it sounds good, but anyone uh, below or much above the line uh, of what you're gonna get, like, will be uh, tempted to take a bigger share, because he earned it. What I'm basically saying is that uh, those who uh, contribute more will be very tempted to to uh, ignore such a system. Sweet incense masks the odor of the offerings, rotten fruit and spoiled fish. Even if eventually they have to uh, spend that money on, like, actually defending themselves from the others. And maybe even uh, affects their profit. Because instead of customers, you got a bunch of, well, people who can't afford a damn thing. Well, I guess it's a 
more complex issue. Anyway, Pitley. Uh, the woman bends over a uh, pile of dried, bitter-smelling herbs. She is crushing and mashing them on a dirty scrap of parchment, coughing with effort. She steps in front of you uh, to block your way, wiping a rag sleeve across her roomy, bloodshed eyes. Paintly? Good gone, I nearly didn't recognize you. You look more death warmed over than Dawnstar. Edder gives a nod and wink. I didn't see you there, Shoddy. Listen. Listen, you and your friends should move along. She turns her head and stifles a crappy calf. Okay. I'm not feeling so good, and I'd hate to get you sick. Are you ill? You hear muffled hacking and the unsteady rhythm of labored, wheezing breaths coming from the back of the room. Nothing a little ginger root and some bed rest won't cure. Please, let me be. She takes another step, blocking your view of the room beyond. The herbs on the table give off an odor that scratches at your throat. I hear people coughing in the back. Well, I can't help with the alchemy. She shakes her head and sighs. It's hard to keep them quiet. <coughs> she lets loose with another fit of coughing, loud enough this time to echo in the small dwelling. She finishes and wipes a fleck of blood from her mouth. There's some sick Raparu in the back. Not much I can do for them now besides keep them comfortable. She looks at the crimson speckle on her wrist. And hidden. In my village, the sick went to the other side of the mountain. Is there nowhere deeper you can flee? It's better than leaving them to wander the district. I can give them a dignified death, if nothing else. I was told you may be able to help with the sh food shortage in the gullet. We tried, but the one away is prize share. Meaning anything we'd give these people has to go through the palace. Okay. Akira, it is for the Ranga and the Mataru to feed the tribe. The title of the Huana tribal chieftain, not to be confused with Ranga Nui, the Rataian title for the emperor. Okay. Best I can tell, our food went to the queen's table, assuming it didn't rot in the storehouse first. If the Queen sanctioned more shares for the Raparu, would the Dawnstars donate crops again? Would you provide the supplies if the Principi agreed to smuggle them to the Raparu? Hmm, what about the Queen? Her thin lips worry together, but she nods. That's a question for Sawin. I'd ask her myself, but I got my hands full here. She's High Priestess at the Temple of Gaon. Tell her Pitley sent you. She'll listen. Probably. Need something? Why are you hiding sick people? Because they've got Drowner's Lung. Spreads like gossip and kills even faster. What's Drowner's Lung? A gift from the Valians. She scowls, dabbing the room from her eyes. Fills your lungs with fluid. Gets you coughing all the time, trying to clear them. One of my patients coughed so hard, she broke a rib. Eventually... It gets so bad, you can't hack it out. You just lie there, struggling for breath, until you choke on your own phlegm. I hear it's a long, hard end. She trails off for a moment, a distant look in her boring eyes. I heard some Raparu had gotten sick, so I brought them here to care for them. City healers don't come down here. She frowns and gives her nose a vicious, snipe, a vicious swipe. The Raparu have no healers of their own? The Kehut pulls at one of his long hairs, frowning. She shakes her head. These people are laborers and fishers. Many aren't even Kahanga. Wound up here after raiders and slavers tore their own tribes apart. She turns back to you. Anyway, I realized what was wrong when I heard the rattle in their chests. The way they gasped for air. She bites the back of, her, back of her hand on her leg and shudders. Only cure is an elixir made with pine seed oil. It costs a lot. 
though not nearly as much as an epidemic. Still, if news of this outbreak gets out, these poor souls will get tossed into the old city. No one with any money in Nekataka spends it on the Raparu. I hope they toss you in for spreading plague, you idiot. <laughs> Damn. I see, is there any way to get a cure? You can get nearly anything on Delver's Row. Only trouble is finding it. And paying for it. Unfortunately, the children of the Dawn Stars don't have many connections in this part of town. She turns away, whooping and hacking into her arm. And I know you got your share of enemies on that side of town. Damn. Of course, maybe I'm wrong. If you need to get to Delver's Row, I bet there's someone at the tavern who could tell you how. Criminal types like to wet their throats after a long day of lying, cheating, and stealing. <laughs> She chuckles herself into another coughing fit. What interest do the children of the Dawn Star have in Gulat? Maybe I should read this, just to be 100% sure who are these people. Not to be confused with the supernatural manifestations of Eotas, the children of the Dawn Stars are uh, Ratseran, followers of Eotas, who have traveled to the Deathfire Archipelago as migrant workers in the decades following the Saints' War, lacking colonies of their own. Dawn Stars can often be found in the employ of uh, the Valian Trading Company or Royal Deathfire uh, Company. About the only honest one. The Reparu here are treated like garbage. Even made to eat garbage from that scrap heap opposite the lift. She shakes her head. And Dario and his principy scum took advantage of the neglect down here to set up the black market on Delver's Road. Go on. All the while, the gullet gets more crowded as tribes from the other islands come to Nekataka. Some are driven from their homes by pirates, raiders, even trading company thugs. Her eyes darken. Others hear stories of the foreign wealth pouring into the city. What they don't realize is most of it flows between the foreigners and the palace. She makes a circular motion with her finger. I see. Some days. I think maybe this is why Aethus brought us to dead fire. So we can do some good. The other days, I'm too damn tired. She arches her back, popping her spine. What interest do the children of Dawnstars have in the Gulat? About the only honest one. The Reparu here are treated like garbage. Yeah, I and know. Dario and his princess. Let's discuss this another time. So will you. Farewell. She's repeating herself. Yeah. We're not gonna deal with those Roparu. We can blow them up. That could be a tank. Blowing them up with fireballs. Gods, lad. I could live forever and never be tyrant of these islands. The Kara. The beaches of Oreo Koiki. The sands of Poco Kahara. Oh, the lads walking them beaches. The Kataka? With sand on their asses. Oh, exit. Akira, them as well. Please, I did nothing. You see a man being dragged along a rickety broadwalk, uh, boardwalk toward the rusty cage that swings over the abyss. He strains against the guard's grip. The guard delivers a savage backhand. Enough! Or do you wish to consign her to the old city as well? The warrior casts a meaningful glance at a woman standing a short distance away. Let him go! She screams at the guards, but she doesn't dare approach. The man notices her. His face lights up with shame. Fear! I'm sorry! Ah. Your tongue flops like a dying fish. I tire of its stink. Lower him down! What? The guards drag the Roparu into a metal cage and lock him inside. He shouts and rattles the bars as it is lowered over the edge of the platform. Eventually his screams are lost to the depths. 
May Tangelo and devour your souls, you cold-blooded eels. What? What's going on here? What crime could he have committed to deserve such a fate? To overseer Hitanga. Be careful. The gullet is no place for outsiders. So what we know so far is that they have this special system that apparently uh, about everyone benefiting, but it's clearly corrupt and it doesn't work that way. And the way, and I could definitely uh, realize the fact that like, okay, sure, maybe uh, some people contribute more, others not so much, but like, this is their government, this is their well, I suppose the way their society is supposed to work. Yet, well, I guess we're gonna hear out the queen. Maybe before I make up my mind. Perhaps way too many people are here, and uh, I don't. I'm not really convinced that like they can't feed them. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Guard the. Uh, Pulls his arms, watching the activity on the walk face through uh, silly eyes. A coral piercing juts from his lower lip. He notices you with a sharp nod. Let's say there were there were some people <laughs> sick with drowner's lung. He narrowed his eyes wide. His narrowed eyes widen. What a silly notion, I say. Do you not think so? <laughs> they had. Kehu speaks out in full voice and gives you a look of warning. This would be a great danger to the gullet. Possibly the entire city. You know something? No, I'm just wondering. Do not joke of this. Why was that man sent below? Otaro? He associated with foreign criminals. He spits. The gob of saliva is just one more splotch on the wetter than model boards. I cannot be certain about Biha, so I let her go. But I will be watching her. And this is punishable by death, or worse? Kehu's voice wavers. That it is. He nods with no small measure of pride. These wicked sorts overrun the gullet and corrupt the Raparu. Our justice must be swift and firm. Where's Biha now? Hers is the first house you come to. Just there. He points southwest across the walkways. You'll probably find her there. Where does this lift go? To the old city, Ikira. A god's cursed ruin filled with walking corpses and abominations of the deep. So it's a death sentence. How can you consign your fellow woman or man to this fate? We punish only those who cause trouble. He speaks forcefully but stops himself when he gets a look at the Kehu. Begging your pardon for my tone, sir. He nods. The gullet is no place to wander. Watch yourself for rowdies and pirates. I want to exist. Uh, to the lift to the old city. Are you mad or merely lost? That place is a punishment for the lowest sort. He waves a hand toward the exit. Go and explore some place with pleasant views and fresh air. The harbor, or Periki's overlook. The Kataka has a rich history, and some of it lies buried. I must see it for myself. He shakes his head. It's your neck, Ikira. He whistles and the guard standing by the lift looks over at him and nods. We will leave the lift down there for half a day. That should be enough time to come back to your senses. <laughs> After that, you are on your own. The guard will let you pass. Though I urge you to reconsider. All right, farewell. Biha's home. Can we uh, talk to Biha now? Okay, uh, I saw your boyfriend uh, being sent to his death. Was taking a woman trashes a row of tunics and sarongs hanging from the rafters. Her pointed teeth are gritted in frustration, her lips set in a snarl. The clothes are spotless, yet she swings a handful of reeds again and again, grunting with each blow. Several children huddle together, whispering and looking on with red, tearful eyes. Bataro is gone. Dead. What more do you want? Who, who are you talking with? She punctuates each statement with a fierce uh, whack of uh, the reeds. The children flinch, looking between you and the ruin. 
Uh, wait and observe. The silence stretches on for several seconds until finally she looks at you. A fraction of her anger burns off. Forgive me. I thought you were with the guards who took him. Other casts never visit here. She looks uh, pointedly at Takehu. Do the gods pay a visit to mock my misfortune? Or is sacred stare overcrowded? Ah, forgive the intrusion. I was... We were just leaving. That is, giving you space to grieve. No, we were not leaving. So many crowd into the gullet and you worry about space. <laughs> she laughs bitterly. My village was not like this. Why does Queen Onikaza not send the foreigners away? That's pretty racist. That's not a good policy right there, Biha. How did you know the man who was uh, lowered into the old city? One of the children starts to say something, but Biha shoots him a sharp glare. She turns back to you, arms crossed, gripping the reed bundle tightly. Bataro is punished already, I say. Whatever offense he gave, do not hang it on our necks. She begins uh, swatting at the laundry again, though with considerably less gusto. I know you're scared, but I'm here to... <sighs> but I'm not here to harm you. <laughs> we say the only thing that live in these depths are ghost eels. And fish eaten by ghost eels. Which are you? She turns away from you, striking the sarong harder and harder. Takeho flinches at each blow, fascinated even as he shrinks back in discomfort. The traders say they bring riches in their big ships. The fabric pops and snaps beneath uh, her fury. Sweat is flying, sparing the clean sarong. But what reaches the gullet? Only crime and sickness, I say. She pauses to take another couple of swings at the sarong. Why, what does this have to do with Botaro? He said we would finally leave. She breaks off, her shoulders heaving as uh, she catches her breath. What happened? I heard a Rawatayan captain took up at the tavern. Suduzo, they call her. They say she is a traitor. So I thought maybe she will take passengers. Botaro went and found her in the tavern. Her eyes go hard and dark. Next I see him. The guards are dragging him to the cage. She bares her teeth at the memory. Maybe I can talk to Seduzo. She looks at you with the same critical eyes she's been giving her laundry, wringing and tugging the reeds. They say many Rawatine captains are women. Maybe her ears will open better to you. Okay. She looks around, uh, taking in the hanging clothes, the huddled children and the warped and splintering walls of the shack around them. Bataro took some coin. Everything he scraped together working on the docks. When he went to bargain with the captain, I would offer it to you, but it is probably in the old city with Bataro. Or in someone else's pocket. I could look for Bataro. I could never ask someone to go down to the old city, but since you offer. She trails off, working the reeds between her hands while hope and dread battle in her eyes. It is a big and dangerous place. But perhaps he hid himself. Perhaps. She studies herself with a shake of her head. Please, help him if you can. Or bring me news if you cannot. Very well. I think we learned enough. So we can uh, save the guy and also talk to the... Captain? Not sure which tavern she is in. Makataka? Is anyone else around here? Probably not. Uh, yep. That's not stealing, so I guess we're just gonna take it. <laughs> and we gotta check out the hole. Now, question is... Uh, approach Captain Seduza in the tavern in the gullet about passage for Biha and the children. Alright. That's what I expected. That this uh, Seduzo captain is in the Gulat. Damn. This is a crappy situation.
Can't wait to kill everybody here. Not, not necessarily here in the Gulad, but like... I guess we're gonna learn more and more about this uh, culture. And how things work around here. Well, it gotta be said, like, not too far away. Uh, they have the beautiful baths that cost 1000 copper. Uh, that's... That's quite pricey. Ain't exactly an hole in the wall, is it? On the uh, well, with my account ideas, of it being an hole in the floor. Said there's treasures in that pit. Never mind. Shh. Have you lost your wits? So, we see the captain, Seduzo. Uh, this Riotayan sits a uh, ramrod straight. On the table near her are half-empty liquor bottle and a small porcelain cup. Both smell of uh, anise. Uh, she looks like she's trying to blend in, but her unnatural stillness and her bright, uh, spotless attire makes her stand out like a reef fish against the rocks. Her eyes find yours. Harami! I am here, Seduzo Nui. Do we expect any foreign merchants today? Uh, Seduzo keeps her eyes on you even as uh, she speaks to the soldier. There's only a brief pause. We do not, Seduzo Nui. The captain shifts uncomfortably. Then state your business quickly. I want to avoid another surprise. She glances around quickly as if uh, she expects someone to jump out uh, of another corner of the tavern. Uh, did you cross paths uh, with a man named Otaro? The one who threatened me. I shall not soon forget him. She raises her cup for another sip, scowling into the liquor. These Juana learn too many pretty words from the Valians. You cannot trust what they say. We had pretty words before the first ship landed on Rawatai. The guy who purses his lips and uh, balls his hands at his side. Yes, but did you speak them with such deceitful intent? Flustered, she turns away from Takehu. What exactly happened? This fellow wanted passage on my ship. As if I were the village ferryman. She tosses back the rest of her drink a little too quickly. I told him there was none to be had. Certainly not at his price. She upends her empty cup. Then what? I'm not about to judge it. She refills her cup and sets the bottle down hard. You notice again that her hand is shaking. He told me he had coin. Lots of it. I did not believe him. How could a man who lives in a garbage heap have enough money for passage? She shakes her head. Then he shows me a swollenette. A swollenette? A marked coin. A token of allegiance. The Principi carry them. Go on. I knew then that I was dealing with a pirate. I had heard they were influential in the gullet. But I did not realize how much so. She scowls and shudders. I called for the guards and they dragged him away. That is the last I saw of him. Behind the children still need passage out to the city. There's nothing I can do. The passenger quarters have been reserved by a dwarf named Orin. She picks a straight thread uh, from her smooth, crisp uh, jacket. Why do you bring this to me? You're a merchant, no? I'll pay you to take them. I can take three more in the hold, and no more. Orin and his crew have reserved the berths. That is assuming you have the coin. The children are small, surely you can take more. I will already have to abandon crates of cargo to make room for these three. Plus, the food and water they require. <sighs> Let me think about say. it. What is your business with me? I don't even know where you're taking them. And what kind of uh, life they could have there. Farewell. Let's try to bust out the guy. Verna, what do you have? Romaro ain't never brought me down here. Oh, God, I miss that man. Berta? Why do you bother me, little kiss? Hey, I'm not little. You're all little to me. She squints her broad, uh, sloping brow, wrinkling in con 
consternation. Little and squishy. Do you enjoy working here? No. She hawks a fat goblet of spit. It lands beside the food she's preparing and splatters. The gullet reeks of illness. The beds are too small. An imp tried to nest in my hair. And Firna, the tavern keeper, refuses to give me more than one day off a month. How am I supposed to hunt when I am chained to this stove? She scrunches her face into a grimace. <laughs> Maybe I'll become a pirate. Get myself a bird and an eye patch. You should join my crew. How do you mean? She narrows her eyes and regards you with renewed interest. You know, like a boat. I'm not daft, you condescending little <laughs> mite. Tell me why and in what capacity I should join your crew. Um, my crew hunts a god and they need someone to feed them. You're after the Audra Colossus? Well, I wouldn't mind sailing in his wake. She gives you an exaggerated thing. So, will you join my crew? I don't work for free. Pfft, what? No. Suit yourself. I'm not gonna pay four, uh, 450 just to join my crew. Jeez. Joining my crew is, uh, is an honor. It's a privilege. Perna. So, the whole upper floor. Hmm. So, it seems like we might need to go down. Well, I just need to talk to the queen, but I kind of like this whole sidetrack king thing we got before. So, we actually will have quite a lot to talk to her about. But she's not gonna care about what I have to say. Oren. A dwarf sits uh, before a generous and curious spread. Steamed muscles arranged in concentric circles. Rounds of flatbread stacked in a neat tower. And a melon sliced in even triangles. Why bother? Yet his attention is focused on the four cups and the bottle in front of him. He has the cups organized in an almost perfect square around the bottle, but as you look on, he leans down to just one. The others with him wait quietly and observe the ritual. Move one of the cups. Collect <laughs> collective gasp rises from the other mercenaries. The dwarf gives you a warning glare and maneuvers the cup back into place. Ether nods in agreement, Seraph and Ice close as he nods along. The cat who pinches his lower lip and smiles. Soti's eyes gleam with a dark amusement. Don't do that again. I'm serious. Knock a <laughs> critic off the table. <laughs> what is it doing? Dwarf ignores you and continues nudging the cup. He does this every time. Just have to wait. Holding his breath, he takes the bottle and measures an equal serving of wine into the cups, making uh, three or four passes over each. His companions look on with practice patience. Don't see why you'd spend all that time arranging your food if you aren't making it look like a funny face. <laughs> That's a great point. Eder, I love you so much. At last the bottle is empty and he places it in the exact center of the square. He picks it up and puts it down in the same spot twice more before he's satisfied. Cheers. They all take uh, their cups and drink deeply. At last the leader turns to you. What do you require? I'm still knocking all the crap down the table. I hear you brought passage on Captain Seduzo's ship. Indeed. The good captain has four adequate berths, all equally sized, all facing the same direction. And she's promised to leave promptly. A most agreeable arrangement. Gee, he sips his wine. What would it 
uh, take for you to cede your spots on Sedusa's ship? Out of the question. We're due in Tokoa for another contract, and the client has already paid the advance. He sips from his cup and immediately runs a folded handkerchief around the rim. And we have already paid Seduzo. I couldn't possibly take back the same coins I have already spent. I'll make you an offer for your berths on Seduzo's ship. A gold-packed knight is bound by his contract, and ours binds us to make all possible haste to Tokoa. He squirms and sets his cup uh, down in the exact middle of uh, the water stain. Lining the base up with the edges. Booking passage on another ship on such short notice would be most expensive. I can pay you enough to book a passage on another ship. Have pity, I'm helping a woman and her children seek a better life. One way or another, you're staying here. Look around. The dead fire is filled with misery to say nothing of the gullet. He turns the cup so that the crack along the side faces away from him. Folks like you ain't helping. Have a heart. Or is it already dead in your chest? With a sneer, Sothi rattles her lantern, raising it as if she could suck the soul from his still living body. Seraphon strokes his uh, braided beard beneath uh, a quiet smirk. But it's important to note and realize that... Uh, how did this situation come to be? So, it is obvious, well, the case that people fight each other. Like, fight, like, for example, people in the gullet fight each other over scraps. But if they instead uh, spent all that attention, all that... Well... If they united and uh, started fighting the queen, now that would be a lot more effective. Maybe they would get wiped out. <laughs> I don't know. It's possible. I have oaths to keep. Perhaps that means little to you, but I am bound by them. He turns from sorry to you. What better life do you imagine for them in Rawatai? They will only trade one misery for another. And that's what I suspect. Besides, I have a contract to fulfill. I can pay you enough to book a passage on another ship? He looks up from fidgeting with his cup, long enough to give you a doubtful frown. All ships leaving for Rawatai are laden with luminous Adra and other rare goods. Mercenaries, even of our skill, do not rate so highly. Wow. I need the higher Diplo. I'll think about it. One way or another, you're staying here. We can do that. We can try to kill him. Uh, I don't know. Uh, do you know the way to Delver's Row? He wrinkles his nose. That sounds unsanitary. What brought you to the Death Fire? We had a contract with the Valian Trading Company to defend one of their most valuable properties. He glows with pride. If you're looking for work, I hardly recommend them. They pay well. And they pay on time. He raises his cup and his companions do the likewise. Seraphim, at least here are you. Uh, grinning. Consistency in the shipping lanes. Good for types mercantile, but better for types piratical. Did you say something? Ah, just admiring your spread, my lad. Nothing better after a meal than a ripe pair of melons. Right. Uh, farewell. We can try to kill him. Captain. A word? The guy whose eyes widen in proportion to his smile. What's in your mind? You came to the dead fire for your own reasons. The problems of others, they must be noisy obstacles by comparison. Damn right. We both know the burden of being looked to as a source of hope. What say? It's not that bothersome. It isn't a problem until the gods start making demands. You test my patience now and again. I don't make light of the trust others place in me i don't know i don't think about it that much it's not that bothersome oh no 
You have not been the savior of an archipelago as long as some of us. I think out of Siam planting his hand on his hips, the guy who grins with a deep satisfaction, he locks his eyes with yours and makes no move to break the contact. You look like you want to get something off your chest. What are you doing? I am feeling braver than normal. Nakara, a good captain has that effect on their crew. All the powers of the Deadfire have their eyes on the Watcher of Cadnua. Tell me, is the Watcher watching anyone? What? No. He tips his head coyly to the side, letting his hair drape down with a moist squish. Just you, pretty fish. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> I, I have to say that as a joke. Just you, pretty fish. For once, Ngati answers my prayers. Captain, I would speak plainly. Are you as excited by the possible? What I mean is, if we were to... The guy who clears his throat and studies you, his eyes wide and imploring. What? Yes, yes, a thousand times yes? You call this speaking plainly? I'm flattered to Kehu, but let's not go any farther. No, absolutely not. You call this speaking plainly? That's a bit snappy. I know, Akira. Something about your company stirs my nerves. Um... If we were to share more than just quarters below deck, does the idea appeal to you? Yes, yes, a thousand times yes! I'm flattered, Takehu, but let's not go any farther. Akira, I... Forgive this reckless fish for testing the waters. I will bother you no more. No, 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 it's totally fine. It's fine to ask. It's great, I'm glad you did. Shrugging, he opens his palms by his sides, his smile uninterrupted and in every way unconcerned. Let's be off. I don't be supposing we could, uh, easy breezy, wet ten. Easy breezy. So... The gullet. Uh, but we're not any closer to knowing about the special place that I kind of forgot the name of. <laughs> Damn. Apparently, there is a, is a place. So, do so. What is your business with me? Delver's Row. Do you know a way to Delver's Row? I would have nothing to do with such a place. Her posture stiffens even as her eyes flit around the room. But I hear the... Uh, proprietor might know more. She points disc discreetly toward the bar. Alright. Hey, Ferna. Nolan covered toe-to-ear tip in sable fur leans against the bar, counting change. She gives you a wide, easy smile when she notices your approach, then slips the coins into her pocket with a wink. Hey, uh, fresh face. Welcome to the hole. Just got two rules, yeah? Keep your hands to yourself <laughs> and don't fall in. Need something? Did I? I, I don't think I've spoken to her. I'm looking for a way into Delva's row. No doubt you'd fit right in. But getting there? That's dangerous business, fresh face. I'm aggressive, cruel, and shady. <laughs> Damn. But it ain't none of my business, I suppose. If you're dead set on dying, you'll find Delver's Row in the Narrows. Those twisty alleys carved into the mountain on the west side of the gullet. Oh, I already found it. You've got to make your own way from there. Dario will skin me if I say any more. Discretion and compensation go hand in hand. Nobody knows what Priya knows, except that she's loyal to the gullet. Folks on the bottom gotta work together to get out from under those on top. Aye, I hear you, fresh face. 
She favors you with a wink and a buck tooted grin. I'll tell you how to get there without getting yourself dead first. That would be preferable. Take a right the first chance you get. Then keep going forward until you see a merchant stall. Look close. There's a secret hallway behind a curtain there. That's your entrance. What? I'm sure I don't need to tell you this, but all the same, you'd best watch yourself in Delver's Row. The crooks there will kill you just as soon as cheat you out of everything you own. <laughs> if Dario doesn't gut you first. Okay, let's need not. Need something? I'd like to buy something. What do you need? Do you have any sailors? Sure, I know a few folks who need coin, and a couple of them can even hold their liquor. So, I gotta pay for them. Novice Cook. Tuliak Longfrost. I don't care about adventures. Do I even uh, dismiss Takahu? Just to put in Constantin? Uh, Chanter for hire. I don't know. I don't care for him that much. Okay, let's just go with this party. Accept. So, didn't I you check out Delver's row already? I'm pretty sure that I did. So... Wow, I have a lot of places to go to. Isn't that Delver's Row? That's the Narrows. Whoa, what's going on here? A man saunters over to you with a jagged smile. He's got a long a crooked scar on his forearm and he's rolled his sleeve up uh, to flaunt it. You must be new. Lucky for you, we have a special rate for newcomers. A bag of coppers in exchange for your life. He brandishes a knife. One of his companions grin grins widely enough to show you all of his missing teeth. But the way they are all gathered around you, leaving their own backs exposed, tells you they haven't been here long either. Huh. <laughs> Death godlike. This will be fun. You're newer than I am, which means you're poaching on someone else's territory. How convenient. <laughs> you just walk into my trap. Wh what? Obviously, this spot is perfect for an ambush. I got a few exits, distance to the guards, plenty of drunks and marks. What else would I be doing here? I just killed them. Let's get this over with. Okay, confusion. We target on those guys. Did it work? I can also do a uh, fog. They have low armor. It's gonna be easy. This I cannot do. This weapon's no good to me. Oh boy. Was that really the time for a fireball? Okay. Cutthroat. Yeah, rest in peace. This is the best buff. Probably the best spell I got. Okay. Bunch of guys who had nothing. They're dead now. All right. 
We're no longer flanked and blinded. So I can go toward the queen or just check downstairs. Roparu clothing. Hmm. Anyhow, uh, thanks for watching guys and see you next time.